It's Miller Time on Talk Radio WRNR. A look at local sports with the play-by-play voice of local sports, Matt Miller. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome into this Wednesday edition of Miller Time. Matt Miller along with Matt Crawford. We are in studio, so you can check us out not only on the airwaves, but also on YouTube. Go to WRNR TV and you can see uh, the beautiful faces as you hear the... You can see the faces. Let's not give people false advertising here. What? There's, there's beauty in these faces. Caleb's in the newsroom, I guess. Yeah, but you can't hardly see him from our camera angle. There's a little bit of a glare on the window that separates our studio from his studio. I did see his head bob there, but it, it's hard to see the beauty from the TV camera angle. It is. Happy West Virginia Day. Thank you. 155th anniversary of the state West by God, Virginia. Yeah. We are uh, glad to be around. <laughs> glad to be our own state. As opposed to a lot of people who still think we're just western part of Virginia. Do people actually, do people actually think that, do they? Oh, yeah. There's still no. some folks out there who believe that. No, there's no way. There is. I find that hard to believe. Until you came to Shepherd University, what did you know of West Virginia? To be honest. You're, you're, you're near the shore over in Maryland. The bay. I knew the Mountaineers. Okay, Mountaineers. I knew that. That's because the Mountaineers and the Maryland Terrapins had clashed. Yeah. I, I knew all the standard jokes about West Virginia. And then you came here and found out some are true, some aren't. Exactly. I knew the coal was a big deal, so I, but not a whole lot. In the southern part of the state. Yeah, not up coal, here. Not nearly as big a deal up yeah. here. This is really just the D.C. metropolitan area extended yes. in the panhandle. It's not quite the southern part of the state or even out towards Morgantown and Fairmont. Well, you, you did well on your brief quiz. Because you ask me questions about Maryland, and I'm probably not telling you. Oh, well, I've also been here. It's not like you asked me this, and I've been up here for two months. I right. went to school up here for four years and have been here for a year. So I've lived here for a lived, partially lived here for four and a half years now. Becoming a uh, West Virginia transplant. Yeah, I guess that's what they call me. I got the driver's license and plates in my truck now, so I guess I'm technically a resident. <laughs> Hey, before we get too deep into the program, we want to pass along from the National Weather Service a severe thunderstorm warning. Just getting this information as we were coming on the air. It's in effect until about 530. It includes Morgan County and Berkeley County. Doesn't look like Jefferson County will be involved, but uh, the uh, Weather Service keeping an eye on a storm system that uh, just before 5 o'clock was moving in a southeast direction at 30 miles an hour. It was in the area of Warfordsburg and uh, just northeast of Pawpaw over in Morgan County. And so uh, there is the threat of that storm kind of moving through our area over the course of the next 20 minutes. Uh, one of the hazards listed is 60 mile an hour wind gust. So keep an eye on the sky. Is this the calm before the storm? Because looking out the window right now, I can see the sun and I don't see a leaf moving. I am just passing along what we received as this has come in again just before the top of the hour that the potential is there for a severe thunderstorm to be moving through the area within the next 20 minutes. I'll take your word on it, but looking outside right now, it does not look like we're going to get killed. Well, maybe it won't quite reach our portion of Berkeley County as it's moving in, a, again, a southeasterly direction, depending on where it goes through. Maybe it'll go through in more of the southern part of the county as it would work its way then further south. Either way, just be aware. That'd be the Inwood Bunker Hill area, correct? That's it. Yes, very good. There's my second West Virginia Man. quiz of the day. Not quite ready for the Golden Horseshoe, but getting close. I don't even know what the Golden Horseshoe is. So. Man. All right, we'll talk about that during the break. Let's talk some Nationals. Nationals? Much, much needed win yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. And the Orioles just are the Orioles. 51 losses now in the season. Just not doing well at all. No, it, it has been a struggle. And when they do well on one side of the ball, they don't do well on the other. You know, they've yet to be able to really put things together as they had a lead against the Nationals yesterday, but could not hold on. They had a four-run lead in the fourth. 
Yeah, but that, the fourth is still early. Yeah, but they got off to they got out to an early lead. They Their did. starting pitcher went eight innings. So that's not a bad day for the Orioles. Again, no. it's just not being able to put a complete game together, which they haven't been able to do all season. Right. And they're I still don't know how Buck Show Walter is managing the Orioles. I, I guess it's a respect thing that Dan Duquette doesn't oh, I don't know how long Dan Duquette's gonna be there from right. what I've heard. But I don't know how he's still managing the I mean, the historically bad season they're having after having a subpar season last season. I mean, are they just waiting until the All-Star break, or is this truly just going to be let them finish the year out? Because it's at the end of the contract. Right. So, in a way, they're not salvaging this season, and they don't have to worry about bringing them back next year. So, maybe it is just the thought of we'll let them finish this season out. It's not like we're going to salvage it. Anyway, I think they're 27 and a half games back in the division with the Yankees and the Red Sox, who are two of the hottest teams in baseball. So, I, I don't know. I just think you got to send some sort of a message, and if – the GM doesn't change or the manager doesn't change. There, there's got to be some sort of message that the ownership isn't okay with this. At least that's the way I look at it. I know you've thought differently when I brought this up off air, but to me, it, if I'm a player and the ownership group apparently doesn't care that they're, what are they now, 19 and or 20 and 51? Yeah, 20 and, 20 and 51. 51. And apparently nothing matters to them enough to make any sort of change and in the higher ranks. Yeah, I don't know, though, that you look at it and say that somebody doesn't care because, you know, full well, these players that are going out there game in and game out care about succeeding individually as athletes and as well succeeding as a team. And so when you're struggling to have that success, then you, you've got to be concerned. It, you got to have restless nights at sleep or trying to sleep. And just because the ownership group comes in and fires somebody, look, and that, that may create a, what, a 10-game turnaround, you know, where for the next 10 or 11 it or 12 games. It creates a feeling go, knowing okay. that the ownership still cares about you as a player wanting to, to, to succeed. And as a fan base, it shows that the ownership cares that, they want to succeed. Well, there, there's not much there as far as uh, the, the, the fan base coming out to games. I mean, I, I, I saw some highlights of the Father's Day game at Camden Yards, and it seemed like there was nobody there. And the first thought in my mind was, wow, Father's Day is the day when I would expect a lot of ballparks to be filled, right? You know, what a great way to spend Father's Day if, if you and your dad are sports fans, baseball fans, then to go to a game. And so, you know, I'm not sure the fan base is coming back in any kind of droves just because, all right, we got a new manager. Things are going to turn around. No, they're not. You still have the same team that is going out there and struggling no matter who's at the helm. I still think in any way, shape, or form, it, you need to do something to let your players know that there is still an investment in this team. And to, to me, keeping everything the same is not, not proving that at all. And I believe Caleb Flair, I believe we have somebody that wants to uh, hop on and talk about this on the show. Well, let's... I believe we're going to go to the... WVU Medicine Berkeley Medical Center talk line and bring Chris in on Miller time. Chris, good evening. Matt, Matt, how are you? Good. Chris, are you an Orioles fan or a Nationals fan or both? Or I've been an Orioles fan since uh, 1975 or so. All right. So you've seen the ups and downs. Yep. They didn't have a losing season in my lifetime until I was a senior in high school. All right, so what do you think? Does Buck deserve the rest of the year? Um, any move they could make to start over would be fine with me, but the, the key is you can't have Dan Duquette, who had one foot out the door in his dalliance with the Blue Jays two or three years ago. He, he hasn't wanted to be here for a while. They, they're going to have to make a series of franchise altering moves with Machado, maybe Jones, O'Day, Brock, all of it. You can't have Dan Duquette making those decisions. I don't know if it's going to be Brady. I don't know if it's going to be the Angelo Suns, but it can't be Duquette. And they should have, they should have moved on from him early this season or, you know, even before the season. So you think it should be more of the front office GM move than say the Buck Showalter managerial move. Well, I mean, you can resurrect 
John McGraw or Earl Weaver or whoever, and who was going to do what with this crew? I mean, you know, I, I mean, Buck, to, to me, I, Buck had me for a long time with the whole, you know, I like our guys kind of thing, and that's fine and great. But at some point, um, I mean, I know it's the modern era where we really coddle players, but 20 and 51, and he's still just – won't be too critical. I, I don't know if he's, you know, I just, it's, it's not a match anymore. Well, maybe he's not being critical in the public eye, but behind the scenes is a little more critical. I don't know. Well, you know, we'll, we'll never see that, but um, again, but you talked about the father's day crowd, the fan base is lost. Oh yes. And, and when, and if they're going to win 50 games, like the uh, Astros did for a couple of years, take that punt and try to be good again in three or four years. What are the crowds going to be like at Camden Yards? What are the TV ratings going to be over two years? And what's the value of this franchise going to be going forward? I mean, eventually, um, you know, I don't know the, the Nats and Orioles uh, border war and, and how that resulted in the Orioles um, getting a lot of money out of that. Um, I don't know if that continues in perpetuity. I just, I mean, I have real questions about the long-term health of this franchise. As a longtime fan of the Orioles, do you see their farm system doing what it needs to or should be doing in helping to develop young players that can turn this around? Well, uh, you know, they really had their shot um, with some guys who are there and contributing. Obviously, Machado, I think, was the third or fourth overall pick. Yeah, Weeders had some good years, but didn't have a long tenure there. Britain was top closer in the game for a couple of years, but for every one of those guys, you've had uh, you know like a uh, Brian Mattis, you know, Gossman. This was first round pick that boy, he's still teasing you at 26 years old. Bundy missed three full years being hurt. He's been okay, but not a top of the rotation guy. So. I mean, they've kind of had their chance with those first-round picks, and it hasn't it hasn't happened. I mean, their, their success has kind of been built on the dumpster diving that Duquette does, some of which has worked, and then some of the Andy McPhail moves. I mean, the Eric Bedard trade, um, you know, gave them a center fielder for 10 years, and Tillman, who had six, five or six good years. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just, it's, it's tough to be an Orioles fan right now. Yeah, they fall to the Nationals last night, 9-7 the final. We'll have more on how that one played out as we continue. Chris, thank you for listening and giving us a call. Well, no problem at all. Thanks. All right, we got to get in our first break. When we come back, we'll uh, continue to talk a little Major League Baseball. And that'll be later on in the program. But earlier today, there was a media conference at Shepherd University, and we want to take you back uh, to a little bit of what happened at that media conference. That's next on Miller Time. Life is older there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains. Growing like a breeze. The future doesn't wait. Why should you? Blue Ridge Community and Technical College offers over 50 degree and certificate programs in education, IT, culinary arts, engineering, and so much more. Small class sizes, flexible schedules with evening and online classes, with affordable tuition, plus financial aid is available to those who qualify. Now you can go to college. Visit us online at blueridgectc.edu. That's blueridgectc.edu. Stop waiting and enroll today. Spadainbush is an independent insurance agency. You see, there's an important difference between Smith and Aiden Bush and agents who work just for one company. Working for one company, they can only sell the products of that company. On the other hand, Smith and Aiden Bush can design a program just for you, your family, or your business, and at the right cost. Smith and Aiden Bush. Martinsburg, Charlestown, and Berkeley Springs. Wolf with the NFL Network now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones hopes running back Ezekiel Elliott won't have any off-the-field issues this year. Jones telling the Fort Worth Star Telegram that he trusts his running back as much as he trusts himself and feels Zeke has a new sense of awareness this year. Elliott missed six games last season due to suspension. 
NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport says Baltimore agreed to a four-year deal with tight end Hayden Hurst on Tuesday. The Ravens selected Hurst 25th overall before taking Lamar Jackson with the last pick of the first round. The Browns have signed offensive lineman Greg Robinson on Tuesday. Robinson started in six games for Detroit last season before he was sidelined with a knee injury. Elsewhere, Jadavian Clowney is set to play this season under the fifth-year option, but according to the Houston Chronicle, he may not get an extension as soon as he'd like saying the Texans may be hesitant to sign Clowney long-term unless he proves he can stay healthy. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. If you owe the IRS back taxes, payroll taxes, or have not filed your returns, the IRS will get you. They can take your property, take you to court, even put you in jail. With one call to wall, you'll never need to talk to the IRS again. Our average client settles for about 10% of what is owed. We offer free face-to-face consultations in your local area. Call 800-727-0433. That's 800-727-0433. The national debt is now over $20 trillion. What happens next? Rising inflation drops in the dollar's value. Some experts say another crash is coming. You can fight this, not with stocks or bonds, but with gold and silver coins in an IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. Call 855-858-5807 and learn how an IRA backed by physical gold and silver can hedge against inflation. Call Augusta Precious Metals right now at 855-858-5807 and get a free gold IRA guide. The WVU Medicine Spring Mills office building is now open. This new three-story, 40,000-square-foot facility is conveniently located off Interstate 81, Exit 20, at the intersection of US 11 and Campus Drive. The WVU Medicine Spring Mills Medical Office Building features many different offices and services for area residents. It's now home to Urgent Care, Women's Imaging Center, Lab Services, and Primary Care Pediatrics. The WVU Medicine Spring Mills office building now open to serve you. Do you know the words? Go Shepherd. I do actually. I think I yeah. I, I couldn't tell you the alma mater, which at graduation it was funny because my parents asked me after graduation, "Did you know the words to your alma mater?" And I said, "I, I couldn't even tell you the first word." But the fight song is short enough and simple enough that I think I could get through the fight song. Well, we didn't hear the fight song earlier today, but uh, we were down at Shepherd, or at least I got the chance to be at Shepherd. Matt was back in studio monitoring what uh, proved to be a short but sweet live broadcast of the uh, media conference. We would like to have been able to bring you the entire conference, but after the initial comments and they went into a question and answer session, it's just too difficult to be able to pick up all of the uh, questions being asked as well as all of the comments that are being made based on those questions uh, with our microphone set up. So we bring you some of that uh, right here during Miller time. I I thought the most interesting thing to me was the opportunity to finally hear from someone with the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Uh, And I will admit, we hadn't reached out to them uh, to any major extent to try to get them on Miller time. We have reached out to the Mountain East Conference. So far, I've not heard back from Reed Amos about the Rams uh, leaving the MEC. But we Uh, do know that when we did talk to him, he wasn't too thrilled about this whole situation. About the possibility. So maybe giving a little bit of time to cool down and not say anything or do anything that would put a bad name to the Mountain East. But yeah, we and we talked to him. He, he was not too happy about the, just the rumors at that point. It wasn't it was what, two and a half months ago when we talked to him? But yet it was more than just a rumor, as we'll find out from Steve Murray, commissioner of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, in some of his comments earlier today. Let's start with his initial address to those in attendance. I am pleased uh, on behalf of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Board of Directors to welcome Shepherd University as the newest full-time member of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. I'd be remiss, however, to start out this program without the mention of uh, mentioning that I should be wishing West Virginia 
a happy birthday on his 155th birthday. And I'm very happy to be in West by God, Virginia. Uh, it's an exciting time for us. Any time uh, the transition that we faced in the last year with losing a member, uh, frankly, of Cheney University status, a long and the oldest historically black college and university in the United States. Uh, and, and then, but having the opportunity to bring a athletic program in a university like Shepherd to our newest membership has been outstanding. Uh, I have not held this in as any secret in my position in the last five or six years in the league. When people ask us what would happen next, the PSAC, if expansion or membership changed. And I said, I will tell you the first call I get from a university that's leaving us, I will be calling before that phone's cold, cold to Shepherd University to ask them to join us. I think it makes a perfect match for us geographically, as the president mentioned, uh, and also athletically, considering the great programs that we've had, uh, you've had here at the university for so many years. Uh, also academically, uh, the Shepherd University fits nicely within what we do in the PSAC academically. We're very proud as a predominantly state university conference to see our student athletes at the top of the charts in Division Two, I want to publicly thank the coaches at Shepherd University for their support in this process. We met with all of the coaches about two months ago, uh, came down to visit and, and answered their questions and presented what we do and how we do things in the PSAC and why we do them. Uh, Chauncey's been a, a, a great conversation. We've been texting each other for several months now. Our first contact was actually at the NCAA convention in January. Uh, we met with President Hendricks uh, uh, earlier in, in the summer, I mean, earlier in the spring and had a, a nice visit as well. Uh, it's been an outstanding opportunity opportunity for us. We're very excited about the opportunity. Uh, I think our schools will provide a great opportunity for bringing uh, many people down to Shepherdstown, which I have found to be a wonderful community. I will tell you, I've already picked out the best place to eat in Shepherdstown, which is the bakery, uh, as you know. Uh, so after we leave here, our staff was with me here today. We'll be going to the Shepherdstown Bakery uh, and visiting. So we pick one place in every town that's that's a great place that we want to visit. Uh, we want to particularly thank uh, Melanie Ford as well. Uh, Melanie and I spent a lot of time at the softball regional. Uh, it was hosted up at Lock Haven University, and we had a chance to talk and visit, and it was a great opportunity for us as well. So um, we are excited to have this happen so quickly. Uh, it's been a whirlwind tour, but I think as as I hope everyone from Shepherd University will find and the supporters will find, it will be uh, something we'll look back on and see as a historic day for both the university and the conference and something that will be very beneficial to us. Well, there you hear from Steve Murray. He is the commissioner of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Those were his initial remarks at the beginning of today's media conference, officially, I guess, if you will, welcoming Shepard into the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Now, we'll hear more uh, with some individual answers from the question and answer session coming up from Steve Murray. But, Matt, you already want to take a little umbrage with one of the things that he said. Yeah, I like the sweet shop in Shepherdstown, the bakery he referred to, but that, that there is better food in Shepherdstown. He needs to, needs to go to Betty's for breakfast or lunch or go to King's and get a cheesesteak or go to Mi Delgado and get a burrito or Maria's and get a burrito. And there's, there's better food in Shepherdstown. Not taking anything away from the sweet shop. Right. But that there is some quality food in downtown Shepherdstown. I think he was just looking for something sweet at that time. I mean, when it comes to sweet, I, I'm, I'm with you. Oh yeah. There's very few places you can go get a chocolate chip cookie or a muffin yeah. or something as good as the sweet shop in Shepherdstown. So let's go to Betty's and fill up on some meat and taters, as you might say, and then go to the sweet shop and uh, finish filling up on some cinnamon rolls or something like that. I'd agree with that. There you go. It's a movement I can get behind. So we'll have, the rocks to, cooking. we'll have to get together with Mr. Murray and uh, introduce him to some of those other places when he is in town. Certainly one of the things that he talked about, and we'll hear from the coaches here in a little bit as they'll talk about, hopefully this move generates some larger crowds at games on a regular basis, bringing more people into Shepherds. It has to. There's no way it won't. I mean, you, you, one game in particular, the Shippensburg game. That's going to bring in probably just as many opposing fans as an entire season would in the Mountain East. Other than Fairmont, how many people are traveling in the Mountain East? Not, not, a, not lot a whole lot. Because of the distance. It is a long distance. So, yeah, I guarantee there's going to be more people on the opposing side. More on that coming up as we hear from uh, Commissioner Murray and some Shepherd Ram coaches. Stay tuned for more Miller Time. <laughs> 
latest news update. We're signing an executive order. Responding to outrage over the separation of parents and children at the border, President Trump reversed himself on that practice. It's about keeping families together while at the same time being sure that we have a very powerful, very strong border. CBS's Major Garrett. What we don't know is what happens to the families that have already been separated. Will they suddenly be put up back together? Will this be universal going forward? The Justice Department says unless Congress or the courts change the time limit on detaining minors, the executive order will expire after 20 days. Meantime, the Texas Tribune's Alana Rocha says many detention facilities have a history of abuse and neglect. It ranges from everything from lack of medical attention for, you know, a child who had a burn, another who had a broken wrist, a sexually transmitted disease. One kid was given medicine that they were allergic to. CBS News Update, I'm Pam Coulter. forecast weatherman bob kukin the evening's color radar watching for the showers to dissipate as we get on through the late night and gradually disappear through the early morning temperatures back to about 66 for the low a mix of clouds and sun for tomorrow our official start of summer with the high temperature near 82 fair skies tomorrow night lows lower 60s friday could bring another shower or two i'm bob kukin talk radio wrnr you think back to when your daughter was the tiniest, sweetest, softest, prettiest, most precious little person in your life. She cried and your heart raced. She smiled and you laughed. She said, Mama, and you cried. Hi, this is Lori from Bechtel Jewelers. I know she spent a lot of time in your arms, by your side, in your lap. The years have flown and she outgrew your lap, but she never outgrew your heart. Your girl is graduating now, and a gift she will wear and treasure forever is a heart pendant. Each time she looks at it, she'll know she's always in your heart. Wherever she goes, you'll be together. At Bechtel Jewelers, Route 11 South in Inwood, our heart pendants start at just $99 in sterling silver. You'll find them in gold, too. Some have gems. Some are sprinkled with diamonds that twinkle like she does. You'll find one that fits her, sort of like the way she used to fit in your lap. At Bechtel Jewelers, Route 11 South in Inwood. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. Trade in the NBA. I'm Jeff Biggs, and it's not one of the big blockbusters, but with the NBA draft coming up tomorrow night, the Nets are the latest to add Dwight Howard in exchange for Timothy Mozgov and two future second-round picks. This is the fourth team in four years for Dwight Howard, but it will allow the Nets to have two max free agent slots next summer. What about this summer for Kawhi Leonard and the Spurs? Well, there's been no word yet after the face-to-face -face meeting yesterday between Kawhi Leonard and Greg Popovich. With a header from Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal got past Morocco 1-0. A Luis Suarez tap-in gave Uruguay a 1-0 win over Saudi Arabia. And Spain took down Iran, also 1-0. In baseball, one final, the Braves lost to the Blue Jays 5-4. I'm Jeff Biggs, NBC Sports Radio. Burke, Schultz, Harmon, and Jenkinson. We're accident, injury, and disability lawyers with over 120 years combined trial experience. When you owe an insurance company money, they want to be paid right away. When an insurance company owes you money, that's a different story, isn't it? At Burke, Schultz, Harmon, and Jenkinson, we devote ourselves to making that story turn out in your favor. We play hardball. Injured in a car wreck? Call for a free consultation. Call us at 304-LAWYERS or 304-263-0900. The Mountaineers live on Talk Radio WRNR. It's intercepted. Here's Kenny Robinson down the right sideline. It's going to be a foot race. He's at midfield. He's to the 40. Being pursued. He gets away to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. End zone. Touchdown. Kenny Robinson. 94 yard pick six. Follow the Mountaineers all fall long on their quest for a Big 12 championship on your home for Mountaineer football. Talk Radio WRNR. The Fan Handle Sports Radio Station. We welcome you back into Miller Time on this Wednesday evening along with Matt Crawford. I'm Matt Miller. This portion of the program being brought to you by, if I can read correctly, Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons, a family-owned full-service funeral home that has proudly served our area since 1880. 
All right, it is that time of the show where we have been trying to add a feature that we, we've been a little inconsistent. We're still with. getting used to it. And and so and I, I'll take partial blame for that because last week while you were gone, I was I on was vacation. It, it and was trying to make sure everything right. that mattered in the show, not that this segment doesn't matter, but that actually mattered in this show was getting done properly. And then I wasn't here to, to crack the whip and, and keep you on task. So crack the whip. And then, uh, you ever, I, don't want, ever, I don't want people thinking that. Have, have you ever snapped a whip, by the way? I've not. Oh, man. My, my, my dad had a couple of uh, eight footers. I think maybe even one was as long as a 12 foot whip. And, yeah, I mean, he could he could make them snap and tried to teach me. And I don't know how many times I welted myself up trying to, you know, get that crack as it would break the, the sound barrier, you know, as you snap it back and. I is that not, what that snapping sound is? Is it breaking the sound barrier? I believe that's what that is. I could be wrong. I mean, I've been wrong about a number of other things. So, but I, I, I kind of thought that's what that was all about. Is it snaps back? So I did not know that. I didn't even register. That's how it made that noise. I figured it was just the material. Whip, but I guess that makes sense. It's not hitting anything. Maybe it is. I've been hit with a whip once as well. Uh, not only by my own doing, but by <laughs> someone else's doing. And uh, and that it, it was it was it was okay. I, I did all right. My, my hand was fine at the. Uh, that's another story for another time. I think though we are ready you want for a look at June nineteenth uh, in sports history. Wait a minute, today's the twentieth. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Take Our a, feature is yesterday's date in sports history. Looking back to June nineteenth again. That is yesterday in sports history. Eighteen forty-six. First officially recognized baseball game played by the Cartwright rules. I'm not sure what exactly the Cartwright rules are. That'll be something we'll to look up because we've had that before, the first recognized baseball game, but I guess this was by different rules. The, Is that the same Cartwrights as in the Bonanza? I doubt it, but maybe. I don't know. The New York Nines defeated the Knickerbockers 23-1 to in Joyce. Moving on down the list, 1943, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh Steelers merged for a brief period of time. Wow. Did not know that. Solved the same year in, on December 5th. So it lasted for six months. Mm -hmm. I guess the fans didn't necessarily get along. But looking at those two sports I was cities, say. I can understand why they may not have liked the fact that those two teams merged. They didn't have their own teams. because Our own Rob Mario is a passionate Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. Does he like uh, Philly? No. Not at all. <laughs> and do the Eagles fans like any anybody? No. no. <laughs> 1955, Mickey Mantle hits career home run number 100. And since you complain about this all the time, I've got to add a Cubs thing in here because you say I add those every day. The Phillies beat the Cubs 1-0 in 15, tying the longest shutout in Phillies history. Just a fun fact for you. 1961, Roger Maris hits his 25th of 61 home runs of the 1961 season. So a pretty good year for Mr. Maris. On this date in 1973, Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, and Willie Davis both get career hit number 2,000. Moving on down the list, 1985, Reggie Jackson hits his 513th career home run to move into 10th place all time. And one more for you from yesterday, if I can even find a good enough one. The, uh, 2000, the L.A. Lakers beat the Indiana Pacers four games to two in the NBA Finals, and Shaquille O'Neal was your MVP. Wow. The NBA Finals not wrapping up until I, I lied. stayed all the way back. I got to add one more. Just to, oh, again, no. just to an, let me in guess. In 2000, Tiger Woods wins golf's U.S. Open by 15 shots, a record of all majors with a U.S. Open par record of 12 under. Think about that. He won, He holds record for 12 under in the U.S. Open. And the winner this year, Brooks Kepka. Won the U.S. Open at one over par. Yeah, and I'm thinking of 15 strokes winning by 15. You said. Yeah, that's almost the same number. That's not of even a game. Strokes that Phil Mickelson took on that 13th hole on Saturday. That was only 10. <laughs> that was only a 10 shot 16th hole or whatever hole it was. Yeah, it was the 13th. 13th hole. Yeah. The, the unlucky 13. He, he uh, had an official apology today. I don't know if you saw that. He I actually did not. came out and apologized for. What he called losing his cool. I just think he was having fun. 
Uh, if he says he was, I, I, no, I'm okay. You don't have fun shooting a 10 on any hole. Okay. And especially when you're a professional golfer, I am as hack as they come when it comes to being on a golf course. Cause I don't get to play very often. And when I do, I ain't good. And when I'm on a hole and I'm putting and going, that one just rolled by and I've already tried 10 times and I can't get that dinky little ball in that semi much bigger hole. Ah, you know, no, I'm not happy. I'm not having fun. Are you kidding? I'm ready to break clubs over the back of my neck like that one golfer did. You know, I'm, I'm ready to chuck them into the lake. I'm ready to go back to the clubhouse and just get a sandwich and wonder why I even came out here. So I can't imagine he was having fun. I just don't think it's quite as serious as everybody's making it out to be. Yeah. I'm not necessarily a huge Phil Mickelson fan. I mean, he's been one of the big representatives of the PGA for how many years now? Oh, yeah. Since the late 90s, maybe earlier than the late 90s. But I, I, everybody's making way too big of a deal out of this. I get golf's a gentleman's game. But all right, the dude did something that was in, in the rule books. He thought, or what he said, he thought logically, okay, I'm probably going to take more of a two-stroke penalty if I let this ball go. So I'm just going to take the two-stroke penalty now and get it out of the way. In a, in a tournament that he was never going to win. Well, that's the key, And too. that was giving everybody fits the entire four days. Yeah, he had no chance. So no. it wasn't like what happened allowed him to potentially stay in it and come in in second, third, fourth place, and even, you know, vie for the championship. I'm with you. I'm, I mean, I'm... I don't have an issue with it. He did it, whatever. The, it's over. The tournament's over, and we move on. But I just don't think that he was having much fun. Not at all. Back to the PSAC. Now that we've spent 10 minutes talking about golf, which we seem to a lot recently. For you and I, I mean, I'm a golf fan. You're a scratch golfer and a golf fan when you can. But we seem to have talked a lot of golf lately. I mean, it's been a it's pretty been happening. big yeah. thing with the U.S. Open and, and, you know, Tiger making strides until the U.S. Open and then it did not go well. So, it didn't go well for a lot of people. It wasn't just Tiger. No, but he, he fell hard. He did. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying it wasn't a good showing for a lot of people. And for as far as he seemed to be coming. Yeah. It, it, you expected a little bit better. Right. You, you were thinking. I'd, I'd okay. agree with that. You, you, he had you thinking going in, all right, he's going to contend. And and not only did he not contend. He didn't he, make the cut. <laughs> right. He wasn't even close. And so, and we'll see how it affects him as he moves ahead this year. Speaking of moving ahead, let's go back to the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Earlier today, Commissioner Steve Murray was at Shepherd University as they held a media conference with a chance to answer questions and talk more about the Shepherd Rams making the move from the Mountain East to the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. That will be coming up in the 2019-2020 season. So Shepherd still has one more year to go in the Mountain East Conference. Uh, these were answers to questions during the uh, the question and answer session. And we start with uh, Commissioner Murray uh, kind of talking about how this whole endeavor began. Frankly, uh, I reached out to the Mountain East Conference before I talked to Chauncey, and that was back in November. Uh, so uh, and said, look, this is what we're going to do. I need to give you fair warning. Uh, and and then we started that process. And then Chauncey and I bumped into each other at a reception at the NCAA convention in January. I wouldn't say bumped. I intentionally came into <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, had a conversation. There wasn't a place to do that. But I said, look, I want to come down in a couple of weeks and visit with you, see where we go. Uh, where they ended up going was uh, an invitation and a shepherd receiving that invitation and the Rams moving to the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Uh, something I'm not sure many Shepherd fans would have seen coming uh, 10 years ago, five years ago, maybe even, although we hear from, you know, Commissioner Murray, he's been thinking about this for a good period of time. I think you can bring that number all the way or that year all the way up until we found out about this in March. I mean, did you think before we, when we initially read Rick Kozlowski's article in the journal, I th I, was it that Easter Sunday? Or right, it was right around that Easter holiday. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Somewhere, and it was just one of those things you're going, really? The the PSAC? I mean, the P, uh, you're, 
And I brought this up to Chauncey when I talked to him last week, and I brought it up to Coach McCook. I think it's weird that you're now playing for the rivals. You really, in a year, are going to go from playing against teams that you have despised when the playoffs have come for the entire existence of Shepherd University, and now you're going to be part of that conference. Is that going to make for some pretty good rivalries, though, jumping right in? I mean, Shepard does have a little bit of history, obviously, with Shippensburg. They do have a little bit of history with Millersville, who knocked the Rams out of the playoffs way back in the uh, late 90s. They've got a little bit of history with the IUPs, even though they'll be on the other side. They're in the West, but, you know, and, and Cutstowns and others, uh, Westchester that they've met in the playoffs. I mean, Shepard is not going into this conference without having at least some kind of knowledge and some kind of, uh, of uh, uh, connection, if you will, with these other schools. I think it'll make for an easier transition. I think that's the best way to put it. I think it, you're not going into a conference where you're just going in blind. Like I think the, you, the move UVA wise is making. Right. I, they're going into a conference with teams that they really, I mean, I can't speak for the smaller sports, but looking at the major sports probably aren't playing all that often. You, you look at, all the sports at Shepherd, and they're playing schools from the PSAC a lot. I mean, you look at soccer teams playing Seton Hill and playing Kutztown in regular season matches all the time. You look at baseball playing PSAC schools. They play Millersville every year, Seton Hill every year, it seems like. And football are, are playing these schools periodically in the playoffs. So you're looking at and have a history with them in the regular seasons going back before the Mountain East Conference. So I think it's – it's a level level of familiarity that I think is going to help it be a more seamless transition. Well, speaking of the transition, here is Commissioner Murray talking about his contacts with uh, Reed Amos as the commissioner of the Mountain East Conference and how that kind of played out. Nobody ever plays their cards too well on this issue. Uh, I think that he understood why it was important to us. Um, Reed's been a good friend for several years. Um, so, you know, you, you have a certain amount of courtesy as a commissioner to a commissioner, but also you have courtesy to your member institution that you're trying to work with, too. So after that, it was pretty much I gave him a heads up. The announcement was coming not much before it was out, but that's the way that kind of business works. So there was the early conversation, it sounded like, way back in November. Uh, we're interested in in the, this team that's in your conference, and you need to know that. But then when the actual announcement came, it seems like it was, hey, we're getting ready to make this announcement soon. Yeah, I don't. he said he's been friends with Reed Amos for a while. I'm, I'm not sure that, that they're going to be exchanging Christmas cards now because I think that, again, we talked to Reed. And this was something that was not sitting well with him, even when it was just rumored. Right. Well, uh, we've got to get in another break. But before we do, let's go ahead and uh, get one more comment from uh, the commissioner, uh, Steve Murray, as, as he talks a little bit about uh, this move into the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference for the Rams. I mean, I, I will tell you, I made a tour of, the, all, of all of our schools about six years ago. And many of the coaches asked the question, what would happen if we change? Because we had we even expanded twice uh, in the last uh, decade. And, uh, you know, what would happen? What would be the next? And I said, look, I'm not going to lie to you. I would take Shepard in a second. And I said, I don't know if the realities are there for that to happen. Um, so uh, it, it, the, the geography is perfect. I mean, they, there's a perfect geographical footprint for us especially with an Eastern Division school. I'm not sure if I'm perfect on my alignment, but I don't think you're, I think Shepherd's pro, Shepherdstown's probably even a little east of Shippensburg at the end of the day, uh, certainly east of Lock Haven. So those are Eastern schools. So it's a, the geographic footprint's perfect. Uh, the rivalry that's existed for years and we hope to reignite with Shippensburg is perfect. So if you look, Shippensburg's the furthest from any other school in the PSAC, even though we are very compact with the furthest. So this gives them a very natural rivalry, which every school school in the league pretty much has a natural geographic rivalry. Shippensburg was a little bit left out, so this creates that excitement, I believe. Uh, the history and tradition, I mean, this is the, this, you've, I think we've shown that Shepherd's been the best school in not only the WBIAC, but the MEC, particularly with a, a, a national championship run a couple years ago in football, uh, and that makes your league better. I mean, it's my job to make our league better. 
at Shepherd University. I think Ernie asked that question when he, we first, when I met with the coaches, he says, why Shepherd? I said, you make us better. And that's clearly what happens here. Yeah, clearly adding Shepherd while losing Cheney, not to take anything away from Cheney, that is a, a historic university, and they're going through a tough time right now. But, you know, through the last number of years, they have struggled to be competitive in that Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference East. So for them to be exiting and for the team to be coming in to be Shepherd, a team that in football has been nationally ranked, that in basketball has been very competitive, that in baseball has been going to regional tournaments, in other sports have been very successful in the Mountain East Conference. That's uh, This is a coup, if you will, for the PSAC. Yeah, you're trading a rust bucket for a Porsche right now. That's the way, I mean, that's, uh, that, that's sadly the way Cheney was on there, it was in athletics for the last couple of years. That's really... The, the comparison I can make right now. As a Mater fan, that hurts to hear you say <laughs> that because he's a pretty good old rust bucket. All right, stay tuned. We've got more Miller time coming up. It's the Jeep Celebration event at Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Martinsburg. Stop in now for great deals on a great line of Jeep products. Get $1,000 cash back on a 2019 Jeep Cherokee with financing at 0% for 60 months. How about a new 2019 Cherokee Latitude 4x4, only $219 a month. Or a 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK for only $296 a month. Get bonus cash up to $6,000 off a 2018 Renegade plus $500 trade. Stop by and test drive a Chrysler Pacifica and get free movie passes. It's all at the Jeep Celebration event at Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, home of the lifetime powertrain warranty on Kelly Island Road or online at millerschryslerjeep.com. All payments based on approved credit, taxes, tax, and processing fees extra. See dealer for details. Hello, this is Delegate Mike Felt, candidate for West Virginia Senate District 16. I want to extend my personal congratulations to all the Little League All-Stars this summer. As a three-sport athlete and Shepherd football player, I understand the importance of discipline, hard work, and perseverance, something our All-Stars have in common. As you continue your journey through this summer and your life, remember this quote from Hall of Famer Jerry Rice, who said, Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can accomplish what others can't. Best of luck and have a great tournament. We're talking with Eric Zimney, Vice President of Horse Racing Operations at Charlestown. There's a horse named after the New England Patriots tight end, Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, is, does he own it? Just get named after him. He doesn't own it. He will be there on Saturday. So as a Steelers fan, I'm tempted to, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, try to barrel roll his knee. You <laughs> 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 don't get torched again like we did last season. We'll, su we'll support you on that. Yeah, yeah, I a lot of people outside of Boston. <laughs> Eastern Panhandle Talk with Rob and David. What did you listen to last week? It's that time of year for loud bangs. No, not just thunderstorms, but fireworks. The city of Martinsburg reminds you that even though West Virginia State Code permits the sale of fireworks, discharging them within city limits is prohibited. And this Martinsburg City Ordinance is in force all year long. Set off fireworks within the city of Martinsburg and you're risking a fine of $500, 30 days in jail, or both. Don't risk it. The discharge of fireworks within city limits is against the law. If you see or hear fireworks being discharged, call the Martinsburg Police Department at 304 264-2100. That's 304-264-2100. Remember, it's against the law to set off fireworks in the city of Martinsburg today and every day. This message paid for by the city of Martinsburg. Welcome you back into Miller time on this Wednesday evening, along with Matt Crawford. I'm Matt Miller. We're on the air till 630 this evening, leading up to the pregame for Washington Nationals baseball. Assuming that a tornado doesn't take us back to uh, to Oz and we don't have to click our heels together three times. And Well, and I wonder if this is moving that same direction, uh, if they may get some thunderstorms in D.C. that could impact tonight's game as the Nationals take on the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, that'd be interesting. DC's a long, 
a little south, but you said the storm was moving southeast. Kind of southeast, so, yeah. Yeah, they may have some issues getting getting that game started. Yeah, Tommy letting us know that uh, out by the airport on the south end of Berkeley County, it is coming down there, uh, the storm rolling through that area, and uh, it is coming down here on this north end of Berkeley County as well. Looks like the wind beginning to settle just a little bit, but over the last five to ten minutes, the trees around have really been blowing in the breeze. Yeah, it was, it was howling there for a minute. So uh, finally, the storms that we talked about right at the top of the hour have worked their way through the area. They were a little off on the uh, thunderstorm warning that was supposed to be out by 530 as the, the rain didn't start till about 545. Bring it. Okay, we, we can move it now to 6 o'clock. How's that? Sounds good. Hey, we'll talk a little more about the media conference today with Shepard officially moving to the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and our chance to hear from uh, some of the coaches and as well as uh, Commissioner Steve Murray. But uh, before we go to the top of the hour with just a few minutes left, let's jump into the NHL as word coming out today of the schedule for the new season and the Washington Capitals will get to raise the Stanley Cup banner in their their home opener and their season opener, October the third against the Boston Bruins. And break in a new head coach, same day. That'll be that'll be strange. Having a new head coach at the helm while a Stanley Cup banner is raised. If Barry Trotz is not coaching, would you expect him to be there? Yes. I would. Because there's recognition of the championship and all of the things that will go on. I guess it depends on what happened behind closed doors in those contract negotiations. If they, He resigned. The, the official word was that he resigned. Although, again, I'm not really sure what he resigned from because he didn't have a contract left. So to me, it just wouldn't be, I'm not renewing my contract. But it, his exact words were that he was leaving the Capitals organization, not that he was fired. So unless, but as things have come out, apparently it was a contract dispute, not just a flat out, eh, I think I'm going to take some time off. Right. So I think it really depends on how many bridges were burned with the Capitals organization. But you think there would be some sort of still, I mean, he's got the connection to the players. Yes. He, he's done more as a head coach than anybody else in, in Capitals history by finally winning a Stanley Cup. So I would, if he's not coaching anywhere else, I would expect him to be there. Would you expect him to be coaching somewhere else? I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I, there's a position open with the Islanders that I could maybe see him taking. He was in Seattle the last couple of days, and there's an expansion franchise. Uh, yeah, there's an expansion franchise going in Seattle. Okay. So I don't know if he's holding out to maybe get, take a couple of years off and then go to Seattle. But I, I don't know. I I can see him coaching next year, but I could also see. All right, let me all right, let me just take a year off. Let me take a couple of years off and kind of soak in what what's happened to me over the last 19 years winning a Stanley Cup. Again, he doesn't have to jump in and prove anything off the bat. Right. Well, uh, the Capitals opening the season October the 3rd at home against the Boston Bruins. And then, hey, it's only fitting that the very next night you open the season as the defending Stanley Cup champions with a back-to-back, -back, and your next game is where? On the road at Pittsburgh. Bring it on. <laughs> they don't scare me anymore. Bring it on. They don't scare you anymore, nope. huh? Well, the regular season never bothered me anyway. I, just, I always wanted to beat the Bengals in the regular season, so bring you it on. wanted to beat them doesn't, in the season. Doesn't matter. Too. Bring it on. Bring on anybody at this point. Uh, there you go. Just a little bit of what the beginning of the hockey season will look like. And once again, you can hear John Walton with all the play-by-play. -play. Capitals hockey here on Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. All right, 6 o'clock. We'll pause for some news and weather and then be back. Stay tuned for more Miller Time. <laughs> Now your local news from Talk Radio WRNR. It'll be a year and a half in jail for stealing and then selling a firearm across state lines. In March, 38-year-old Adam Plouchet of Harper's Ferry admitted to doing so in Jefferson County three years ago. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives investigated. 
24-year-old Charles Palmer III of Martinsburg was sentenced Monday to two years in prison after he pled guilty to one count of possession with the intent to distribute heroin. Palmer admitted to distributing the stuff in June of 2017 in Berkeley County. Martinsburg at about 285 per gallon once again has the highest gasoline price this week of the West Virginia metro area surveyed for the AAA East Central fuel gauge. Huntington has the lowest price at about 271 and the average of the eight West Virginia metro areas is about 278, four cents lower than last week. AAA reports gas is 265 a gallon on average in Virginia. I'm Adam Boardman, Talk Radio WRNR News. Local forecast, weatherman Bob Coogan. The evening's color radar watching for the showers to dissipate as we get on through the late night and gradually disappear through the early morning. Temperatures back to about 66 for the low. A mix of clouds and sun for tomorrow. Our official third of summer with a high temperature near 82. Fair skies tomorrow night, lows lower 60s. Friday could bring another shower or two. I'm Bob Coogan, Talk Radio WRNR. With their sights set on the World Series, don't miss any of the excitement of Washington Nationals baseball. And a swing and a long drive to right. Forget about it. This one's going, going, and long gone. That one almost to the concourse on a 3-0 pitch. Bryce Harper annihilates that one for his 13th home run of the year. Tune in to AM740 and FM1065 for your coverage of Nats baseball all summer long. On Talk Radio WRNR, the Panhandle Sports Radio Station. Why Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota in Martinsburg? Because we're a name you can trust. And you can trust that you'll always find a large selection of over 400 new Chevrolets and a wide selection of new Toyotas at unbeatable prices. How unbeatable? Well, we will not be beat on any deal on any new Chevrolet or Toyota. That's right. You will not find a lower price guaranteed. From Chevy Cruises, Malibus, Impalas, Equinox, Suburbans, Silverados, to Toyota Yaris, Corollas, Camrys, Avalons, and more. No one beats an Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota deal. And remember to check your mailbox for this month's specials and great savings. Simply put, if you're in the market or will soon be in the market for a new or newer vehicle, check out all that Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota has to offer. We're Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota in Martinsburg. or online at AppleValleyChevy.com. That's AppleValleyChevy.com. Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota. The name you can trust. The time. Talk Radio WRNR, in partnership with Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, is proud to announce a new way of celebrating the best things in your life with your life announcements. But we need your help. When good things happen to you, we want to hear about it and let others in on it as well. Send us your birthdays and newborn birth announcements, engagements, weddings, wedding anniversaries. We want to hear about your family, your business, your church, or your organization's best moments and accomplishments. Welcome your new neighbors or pat your favorite teacher or coach on the back. Send us your attaboys and your attagirls. To send us your life announcements, email them to us at promo at talkradiowrnr.com or mail them to Talk Radio WRNR, P.O. Box 709, Martinsburg 25402. Or go to www.talkradiowrnr.com for more details. Include as much information as you can. Who's extending the wishes and a way to contact you? We'll broadcast these announcements three times per day. It's your life announcements from Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies and Talk Radio WRNR. We have the tools, we have the talent. It's Miller time. It's Miller time on Talk Radio WRNR. A look at local sports with the play by play voice of local sports, Matt Miller. We welcome you in to another half hour of Miller time. We've taken you to the bottom of the hour in Washington Nationals baseball tonight, along with Matt Crawford. I'm Matt Miller, and before we jump into a little Nationals baseball coverage, let's uh, remind you to dust off your platform shoes and experience a little Saturday night fever at Nationals Park. It is 70s night presented by Budweiser, and it's this Saturday, June 23rd, as the Nats face the Phillies at 4.05. All right, how about you break out your platform shoes and I'll break out the Budweiser and I can watch you and your platform because I know you probably had a pair of platform shoes back in the day, right? I don't know if you would call them platform shoes, but I did have a pair of the Sunday shoes, you know, you wear to church or I wore to the middle school concert as I played a little bass guitar and uh, they were black shoes that the the 
bottom on the front part of the shoe was maybe a quarter of an inch thick. It wasn't super thick, but as it worked its way back, the heel on the back was probably a good couple of inches high. So you had platform so, shoes. So I, I don't know that you I mean, had platforms. It's okay, okay to admit it. Well, I don't, I mean, I didn't know at that moment in time they were platform shoes. I was a kid just going, okay. I, it was the, the fashion of the day. So you just put them on and wore them. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. You break out your platform shoes. We'll go down to Nats Park. I'll I'll provide the Budweiser, and it'll be a fun time. We'll watch some baseball. Unfortunately, it can happen because Saturday you're taking some vacation time. I right? am. And also on Saturday, we've got Little League All-Star Baseball. So I'll be keeping an you eye on You can wear your Nats. platform shoes to the Little League game. <laughs> that may turn some heads at, uh, yeah. at the ballpark. Mm-hmm. So I walk in with my uh, bell-bottom jeans and uh, – Maybe Get a, a pearl snap shirt that's only buttoned up to like the, the third or fourth button. Big boom box over yep. my shoulder walking in. Yeah. A little staying alive or something playing as I'm making my way up to the press box. Don't look for that if you're at South Berkeley on Saturday um, for for the Little League coverage. I'll probably just be in my regular khaki shorts and, and my WRNR shirt. Hey, let's talk about the Nationals. We'll get back to the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference coming up in our next segment, our final segment, as a matter of fact, for the evening's program. But let's get back to the Washington Nationals. A 9-7 to win last night over the Baltimore Orioles. And as you said at the very top of the show at 5 o'clock, a much-needed win for the Nationals. They managed to take one of the two games against the Yankees. They managed to take a third of yeah. two games against the Yankees. And and then lost the second game and offensively have been struggling. There's just no other way to say it. They have not been hitting the baseball well. What is it? Averaging about 4.2 runs a game. I'm looking at Anthony Bracken who uh, has been uh, uh, doing some crack research for us and, uh, and he pointed that out. What, that's 20th in baseball with one of the best and should be one of the most powerful and highest average hitting baseball rosters in not only the NL, but the entire MLB. Yeah, I mean, they've got names in this lineup. Now, the Nationals have been hit by injuries probably as hard as just no, no, about no, no. anybody else. You can't else. bring up injuries because look at the guys that have replaced them. Well, I look know. how well Mark Reynolds came in when they needed a bat, and he apparently found youth again. Look at Juan Soto. Look, at Daniel Murphy's still trying to get into his race. Well, but you, that's you, the can't, thing. you can't say injuries have totally depleted this Nationals team because the replacements have played just as well, if not better, than the guys they replaced. But that's part of the issue is now you're trying to get some of those guys back into the lineup who haven't been able to take swings, and so you're kind then of— Then why are you rushing them back? I don't Ease them back in. Yeah, I don't know that you're rushing anybody back, though. I mean, you've well, been I'm not talking. I'm not talking while. about necessarily— rushing back as in making them play before they're ready. I'm talking about just throwing them back into the starting lineup every single night when you got guys that replaced them that were hitting the ball pretty well. Maybe if you're Davey Martinez, don't throw the guys back into the lineup as everyday starters immediately. Give them a couple pinch hit days. Give them a day where they start and then go to the sixth inning and you do a double switch when you do your first visit to the mound. But maybe they're, I mean, the guys can't just be thrown back into the starting lineup and expected to play at the rate they were playing before they got injured, and you can't take guys out of the lineup that are being productive. Well, one guy who has not been very productive as of late has been Bryce Harper, although he was productive finally in yesterday's game. Yep, Bryce Harper. The Nats fell in an early hole. Yep. Fourth inning down 5-1. to one. They crawled their way back in, and Bryce Harper tied it on this RBI double. Runners lead first and third, two out. Now the set of the pitch. Swing and a little looper. Shallow left. It's going to drop in a base hit. Eaton scores from third. Soto racing for third. Harper is in the second. With a little jam shot bloop double down the left field line. Maybe that'll get him going. His seventh double of the season drives in the tying run. And now the Nationals have runners on second and third with two out. And Daniel Murphy will be the ninth man to bat of the inning. But it won't be against David Hess. Buck Showalter is on his way to the mound with a score now tie. The Nationals 5 and the Orioles 5. So Bryce Harper finally comes through. And to hear that call from Charlie Slows with two outs. 
I mean, go back to the Yankee game in the makeup on Monday evening, and the Nationals in that full nine-inning game were 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position. So for Harper with two outs to come up with that big base hit, and just that big for the Washington Nationals. Yeah, and that may be one of those hits that can possibly turn Bryce Harper's average around. I mean, it wasn't anything powerful. You heard him say it was a bloop single at first, <laughs> that his speed turned into a double, and I'm sure that speed... Well, Bryce Harper's fast. I'm not taking that away from him. I'm sure that was a little bit of a, a relief and a momentum swing for Harper, and he'd stretched into a double. So it's little things like that that you would hope can maybe turn his season around right now that really, up until yesterday, had been in the dumps for the, the majority of this season now, if you look at it. Yeah, I mean, he got off to such a hot start. I heard one of our promos earlier of you and I fussing about Pitchers not pitching to Bryce Harper in the early part of the season because he had gone off to such a good start. And that's really where things change. Yeah. And look at last year. That's when when Joe Madden, when the manager of the Cubs, decided he was going to intentionally walk Bryce Harper. That's when his scary start last year kind of started to dwindle off. So it, it was, And that just shows the, the need for repetition in the game of baseball. As big as that hit was from Bryce Harper, the biggest hit of the evening came off the bat of Anthony Rendon. Here's the pitch. Swing a line drive left field toward the gap. This one's down. It's by Rickard into the wall. Heading home is Eaton. Soto racing for 30. He's being waved in. Machado's relay to the plate. The slide. He's safe. And over to third goes Rendon. National 7, Orioles 6. Anthony Rendon clears the bases with a two-run double, scoring Eaton and Juan Soto. And Anthony Rendon stays hot and delivers the go-ahead hit here on the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, Rendon goes two for four, post three runs batted in. And, uh, of course, that put the Nationals out in front for good as they go on for the 9-7 to seven victory. Adam Eaton back off the disabled list. He went two for four, had a couple of runs batted in, and scored a couple of runs, and they talked with him after the game. It gives us confidence. You know, like I said, it's short in the game. I think, uh, you know, playing in the AL Central for so long, you see a team like Kansas City where the, really it's just six in the game because the seventh, eighth, and ninth is absolutely shut down. And I, think, um, I think we got the guys to do that. You know, short in the game. And uh, what's impressive is I think we have the starters to not even go six. I mean, those guys go nine. It's impressive uh, the pitching that we have and, and uh, you know, the hitting that we have. Hopefully, we can pitch across enough runs to win. Um, so, like I said, I think it's a heck of a combination. We just. Like you said, it's June, and we're grinding things out, and, and uh, you know, you kind of see what the team's made out of, and uh, hopefully this uh, can propel us forward. There it is, grinding things out, and that's what this Nationals team did last night to score a 9-7 to victory, and we'll try to make it two in a row against the Orioles when they play tonight at Nationals Park. Again, the game time, 7.05, and the pregame scheduled at 6.30, and we'll be joining that pregame here in just a little bit. Baseball. You want to go basketball before we go to Shepherd University? and then the I, was, I was just waiting to see where you're going with this, with your dramatic pauses. <laughs> I'm now, I, sometimes they're dramatic and sometimes they're you're just looking for the right word, not going where it's supposed to go. Um, let's it comes with older age. You want to talk some, some NBA draft? We can. We've, we've got a minute before we need to take the break. Uh, the note that I want to bring up, one that Anthony pointed out to me, is what the Washington Wizards may be looking to do. Uh, reportedly telling teams that their number 15 overall pick in the draft could be up for grabs if the team that would like that pick is also willing to take on the expiring contracts of either center Marchin Gortat or Jason Smith. They need to get rid of Gortat. I mean, Jason Smith's not going to add you an all-star by any means, but I think Gortat is hurting the Wizards while Jason Smith just, he, he's not going to hurt, but he's not going to add anything. I think right now the Wizards need a presence inside and with Gortat's, what is it, 15 million dollar contract that he's 13.7 million right so now. The, the money he's absorbing and the lack of production you're getting for that money on the court I, I think they they need to try their best to get rid of him and get somebody who's going to be a legitimate factor inside 
Well, see, I, I love Gortat. I do too. I, it's nothing against him. He's been a, a good guy for the Wizards to have just player-wise, morale-wise, person-wise. But I think he's at the point in his career that he's not helping the Wizards in a position that they, that they need his help with. I think but, but they, could, the they may be able, in the right position. But you can't afford to go out and get somebody down low when you have that kind of contract for a guy that's going to be playing out of position. The Wizards have not been good in the middle since Wes Unsell. No, nah, Brennan Haywood. Well, I mean, okay, he was he was good. He wasn't Wes Unsell. No, he was Well, nobody was. He's the greatest big man in Wizards history. But uh, okay, uh, go past him though, and they, they they just they have not for the longest time. Had Javale a McGee wasn't inside. bad. Andre Blash wasn't and, bad. And, yeah, neither one of them. They were better than Gortat has been the last year or so. But again, get Gortat out there where he needs to be in more of a power forward type position and get a big guy inside. And then only occasionally do you maybe have to switch Gortat back down inside to give a big man rest and, you know, making some rotations like that. The, the Wizards have to somehow get an inside presence before next season. But they can't do that with that contract limit. I don't think you can afford to keep Gortat and get a guy that's going to be that drastic of an improvement over Gortat in the middle. I don't think you can afford both those salaries. And On top of the huge salary that Otto Porter got going into last season, the high contracts of that? the Wizards' fault. It's their own fault. I'm not yeah. saying it's not their fault. It's 100% their fault, but it, it's still there. The big contracts of Bradley Beal, necessary. Well, not necessary for the drastic money that's paid to professional athletes, but in in what's given to professional athletes, that's needed. And the contract for John Wall's needed. So at some point, you're going to have to get rid of an aging center who's taken up cap room. But you got to replace him with a center that's going to yeah, give you that's an That's their issue. Presence. They need to replace him with a center. Yeah. Not a tall guy who can be in the middle and try to block shots. They need a center. They need a Wes Unsell. They need a Brendan Haywood. They need a JaVale McGee. A JaVale McGee or Andre Blash kind of player would work well. They just need a big body in there that doesn't necessarily need to roam in, in and out of the three-point lines and get and get bodied inside like Gortat has done the last year and a half. We will see what the Wizards do. Can they find a taker for one of those contracts and that number 15 pick? If so, what are the Wizards getting back in return for giving those up. It'll all come down tomorrow night. They're at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. The draft begins around 7 p.m. And right now the Wizards hold that number 15 pick. The one slot, the Phoenix Suns, followed by the Kings, Hawks, Grizzlies, and Mavs with the top five picks in the NBA draft. We'll take a break and come back and wrap up today's program as we take you back again to the media conference at Shepard earlier today with the Rams heading to the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Center at Berkeley Medical Center introduces a healthy way of life. It's not just another diet, but a weight management program developed by the Wellness Center that includes metabolic testing, a simple 10-minute breathing test that determines how many calories your body actually needs, followed by working one-on-one -on -one with a health coach to develop a personalized mix of exercise and nutrition to tip the scales in your favor towards successful weight loss. A lifetime of good health awaits at the Wellness Center. For more info, call 304-264-1232. EPTA invites you to take advantage of their rider programs, the $5 all-day pass, the monthly pass, and the get-a-job, get-a-ride program. Visit EPTAWV.com for further details and come ride with us. This message brought to you by EPTA, the Eastern Panhandle Transit Authority. For schedules and rider information, visit EPTAWV.com. EPTA serves Berkeley and Jefferson Counties. Take the bus, come ride with us. Simply free e-checking from City National Bank. Perfect if you want basic checking with no monthly service fees or balance requirements. Stop by any of our seven Eastern Panhandle locations or visit us online at bankatcity.com. City National Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. 
This week only, it's Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota's reclaimed vehicle sale. We've purchased and reclaimed titles to pre-owned vehicles from dealer auctions, online factory sales, rental fleets, and financial institutions. Many vehicles priced well below fair market value with payments from $99 a month. Little to no down payment should be necessary to obtain preferred financing. The reclaimed vehicle sale. This week only at Apple Valley Chevrolet Toyota in Martinsburg. With approved credit, 15 Sonic, stock number 18C, 392B, 72 months at 3.75%, zero down. Excludes tax, title, registration, and 175 dealer fee. See dealer for details. The Honda 4th of July sales event has brilliant deals on our most popular vehicles, like the Civic, Fit, and Pilot. It's a reason to celebrate across the country, from the Liberty Bell to Hollywood, and even back up to Niagara Falls. So come discover the 2018 KBB.com best overall brand during the Honda 4th of July sales event, now at your Honda dealer. Miller Honda, south of Winchester, home of the Lifetime Power Trade Warranty, www.mymillerhonda.com. Based on 2018 brand image awards from Kelly Gilbert, visit KBB.com for more information. Maybelline, why can't you be true? Oh, Maybelline. We welcome you back into Miller time on this Wednesday evening, taking you to 6:30 in Washington Nationals baseball. At least the pregame show. Hopefully, they'll throw out the first pitch at 7:05. I haven't opened up the Doppler radar screen to... Could be a little damp. Yeah, see if this storm system is extending down into D.C. or not. But we certainly have some uh, showers and thunderstorms moving through the eastern panhandle and some rain in the forecast as we continue through the evening. Speaking of the Nationals, by the way, the Nationals and Georgetown University have teamed up for Georgetown Day at the ballpark. That's this Sunday, June 24th, when the Phillies are in town. With the purchase of a special ticket, you can get a co-branded Georgetown and Nationals new era cap. The Phillies and the Nationals go at it Sunday at 135. Visit nationals.com for details. Looks like there is some rain down in the D.C. area. Then there'll be a window uh, where they might get a little bit of action in before what's rolling through our area right now. Seems like it might be on the way towards the D.C. market. So be prepared. This could be one of those uh, back-and-forth uh, start-stop type of games tonight with the Nationals and the Orioles. And if you're in Winchester, hold on to something because there's a lot of red and orange down there. Well, let's go back to uh, 12 noon today as the Shepherd Rams held a media conference. And uh, there at the media conference, Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Commissioner Steve Murray, as he was uh, kind of welcoming the Rams in and talking about uh, this whole endeavor to see Shepherd move from the Mountain East Conference to what is affectionately called sometimes the PSAC or the PSAC. We're going to have to change that because we uh, apparently they don't like being called that, so we're going to have to adjust the way we, we say that over the next year or so. I believe even President Hendricks used that term PSAC yeah. during her presentation as part of today. Mr. Murray didn't seem to be too upset by it. I can't imagine why he would be, but... <laughs> I know some fans yeah. in, in the uh, the conference uh, don't like it. Well, also in attendance were some Shepherd Rams coaches. Let's start with football coach Ernie McCook and get his reaction because obviously this athletic move is geared around the sport of football probably as much as any other. Yeah, I mean, football runs college athletics. You get to the D1, the big D1 schools, basketball, men's basketball at least throws in a little bit of help too, but the football runs college athletics. So obviously this may, this move was made with football on the mind. So we hear from Ernie McCook and his thoughts on this transition. If you look at the development of our program, uh, our goal is always to win our opener, uh, the season, and then to win the conference that we're playing in. And our focus will be on the Mountain East conference in 2018. Uh, and then to obtain a bid into the national playoffs and, and make the best run we can as a program. Uh, what we've developed here over the last 10 years is we have expectations to win the conference and also to be very successful on a national stage. And uh, the move in consideration was very easy for us because for us to go and win the region, we have to go through the Pennsylvania Conference. So whether you're playing in the conference or out of the conference, uh, we would be competing anyway. I um, think that the Pennsylvania Conference brings a lot of great things to us. Uh, that's not taking anything away from the Mountain East. We've had a lot of fun in that conference for the last five years. Uh, but I think we're going to focus on 2018 and the Mountain East. 
but we'll be excited for 2019 and, and moving into the Pennsylvania Conference. Yep. There you hear from Ernie McCook, head football coach for the Shepherd Rams. Some thoughts on this move into the Pennsylvania Conference. The Rams have competed well against those schools from the PSAC in the postseason. And when you look at where they'll fit in the East, as the PSAC's broken down into East and West, I think Shepard has an opportunity to be right there pretty much season in and season out, battling for a chance to win that conference championship and ultimately play in the conference title game. Remember, East and West get together at the end of the year, which puts them right there in the playoff mix most years. And I think this, and I've said this from the minute we started talking about this, this is going to be better in the long haul for football because of having to play these teams in the playoffs. It's now not going to be, all right, we're going to play the Mountain East the entire year, and then Shepard's going to be the only Mountain East school that makes the playoffs, and you're going to have to play PSAC schools anyway. Much like Coach McCook talked about, to win the region, you got to beat Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference teams. So I think it's going to be a much better tune-up in the regular season and getting into the playoffs in the Mountain East has been for the last five years. Let's turn from football to basketball. Men's head coach Justin Namalik uh, wanted to talk about what it will mean for his team. Jenna Eckleberry, uh, the women's coach, reflects the same thing. The travel for basketball is probably as difficult as any of the other sports uh, who have to play multiple times a week as opposed to football that plays just one time a week. Uh, coach Namalik on the transition. We've always had our obstacles in how to compete in the West Virginia Conference and in the Mountain East. One of those major obstacles has always been travel. Uh, you know, it's a different animal when you have to go on a bus on a Wednesday afternoon and you're going to play a game on Thursday. You're going to travel to another town on Friday. You're going to play a game on Saturday. You know, being on the road for four days, it's hard. You know, our conference storm has always been in Charleston. That's five and a half hours away, you know, um, one of the benefits that Chauncey had mentioned and, and Dr. Hendricks had mentioned was just having fan support. You know, it's really tough for people to get on a bus and go down five and a half hours to watch us play in a conference tournament. You know, so that obstacle of travel uh, is really eliminated and, you know, it's probably like a little bit more level playing field for us now. Just having shorter trips, a lot more day up trips for games. Uh, we won't be on the road for four days anymore. And then even, too, in the conference tournament, just having a chance, you know, the PSAC does a little bit different. Um, if you, you know, get a higher seed, you'll be able to host, you know, and having those games on your at your home institution, you know. And so that's a, that's a number of benefits for us in our basketball program. That is Justin Namalik. We heard much the same from Jenna Eckleberry. She talked about uh, how, you know, she's already recruited some players out of Pennsylvania who have, you know, come into Shepherdstown and played some very good basketball. And so this really opens up that avenue as well to be able to get to those type of players. Off mic, I talked a little bit with Matt McCarty, the baseball coach. He commented about how they recruit, uh, especially junior college players, and he's had a number of players that he would like to get that ultimately are from Pennsylvania and determine I'd rather play in Pennsylvania against those schools that now Matt McCarty says, hey, I've got an opportunity to say to them, you will play those schools. Mom and dad will get those opportunities to see you, even though you're out of school just across the border in West Virginia. So hopefully recruiting can go well for really all the programs. It'll be interesting for baseball to see how the game style changes. You and I have talked on mic and off mic, and anybody who's ever seen Mountain East Conference games has seen it. MEC games were a slugfest. It was who's going to hit more home runs. And from what we've seen in the playoffs, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference is not like that. They're a very well-rounded baseball team. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see if Shepard has to adjust or what that change is going to be in the spring of 2020. Yeah, and you still look, though, I mean, when you shepherd with a non-conference matchup with, what was it, Shippensburg had a huge lead, it looked like, and ended up falling 12-11, 13-11. So, you know, they've had some high-scoring games and have played some stiff competition out of that Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference before. It will be fun to see how this whole move plays out. Well, we have played out today's Miller time. We are wrapping things up as we get ready for Washington Nationals baseball you're listening to Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. Baseball 
is back in Washington, D.C. Police ready to play. Swing a line drive. Caught by Zimmerman. He'll go to first. Double play. Gonna throw it across the diamond and get the out there. It's a triple play. It's a triple play. 